Hello and welcome to part 6 of my video series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video, I want to talk about something very important to game design, and that is state switching. Now, if you're not familiar with the idea or concept of what states are in a video game, you can probably imagine that if you have an object or a bad guy or really anything in your game that might behave differently or act differently or look different, depending on what's happening in the game, that's what states are for. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a bad guy that is animated moving back and forth, but we're not going to animate it traditionally. We're going to animate it programmatically. That means we're going to create two states for this default cube, in this case, my bad guy, and the bad guy is going to be moving back and forth and back and forth. But to do that, we're going to create two states, one state for the character or bad guy moving in one direction and a second state in which the bad guy is always moving in the other direction. And then we'll be creating a timer or a delay in which we're switching between state one in which the character moves one way and the other way will be state two. So we're going to be creating um, and losing how to create and switch states. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to change my uh, render engine over to the game engine. And of course, I'm going to split this window into two. So I'll grab this little cross tab area up here and drag it straight down to split this window into two. And I'll change this bottom window into a logic editor window, of course. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out on my logic editor window and I'll press N on my keyboard to hide that properties panel and we're good to go. For this bad guy to move in one direction, we're not going to animate it. We're gonna just tell it to always move in that direction. And in this case, I think I'll move on the X axis um, in the global axes. So to set this up, to have an object always move in a certain direction, we need to use an always sensor. So I'm gonna click on add sensor with the cube selected. I'm gonna add always. So basically what this does is it always does it. It's always triggering whatever we plug it into, whatever actuator we tell it to always do. We always want this cube to move. So I'm gonna add an actuator for motion, a motion actuator, and I'll connect those up. So I'll just connect with the ports by clicking and dragging, of course. And I want it to move on the X axis in the positive direction where the X or red arrow is pointing. Uh, in this case, I haven't changed the cube at all, so it doesn't matter that I'm in global. I could be in local, though. That might be better. I'm going to change the location very little um, all the time. So I'm going to change it 0.1 in the positive direction. Now, you have to keep in mind that this is always happening. It means it's always doing this action at 60 times per second. How do I know that? Well, under the camera tab, when I have Blender game set up, um, the refresh rate of my game is 60 times per second. That's 60 frames per second or 60 hertz. That's the rate of our game. So if I go ahead and press P on my keyboard, the cube's gonna move 0.1 Blender units on the X axis in the positive local direction, uh, 60 times per second. Great. We're gonna create now a second state for this object which it moves in the opposite direction. How do you create a second state? Well, it's a really funny and not a very good choice of user interface design on the part of the um, interface designers of Blender, especially in this window. There's this tiny little plus. It's next to or underneath the, the controller's header. And if you click this little tiny plus, it brings up a new area, which is a grid of squares, which looks a lot like layers these buttons up here, but these are states. And this little area is divided into two parts, the upper half of this window and the lower half. Right now, we're only gonna deal with the upper half of this window. We'll talk about what the lower half is at the end of this video. So right now, we have one of these boxes, one of these states set visible by having it dark. You'll notice that it has a little dot in it. That means that we've added logic bricks into this state. If I click in the next one over, you'll see that there are no longer any logic bricks because this is our new set of behaviors for this second state. So in this second state, I'm gonna add a new sensor. It's also gonna be an always sensor. So we're always gonna be doing something else. And we're also gonna add a motion actuator. So I'll click on motion and I'm gonna have to connect these two. And in this second state, I wanna have it moving in the exact opposite direction. So the location, the local location rather is gonna be moving at negative 0 0.1 um, increments 60 times per second. I'm not gonna bother to rename these things. I think we're not using that many, so it's pretty simple to understand. So right now, if I press P on my keyboard to play, right now we're using the second state. So if I press P, it's gonna move in the opposite direction from the first state. I'll click on that one and I'll press P from the first state. So we have two different states, but how do we switch between them? 
Well, we're going to create a new delay sensor. So I'm going to be in my first state, this first one right here, and I'm going to add a delay. And that's how you can create a pause or a wait for something to happen. So in the first state, I'm going to click Add Sensor. I'm going to add a delay sensor. And this delay sensor basically means delay or wait, wait a certain amount of time. And the way you specify that time is in this delay value. Now, this is not a number of seconds. This is a number of game ticks. That means if you want it to wait one second before doing whatever you tell it to do, you need to put 60. In this case, I'm going to have it move every two seconds. So two times 60 is 120. And so after two seconds, it's going to do whatever I tell it to do, whatever I plug that into. I want it to switch states over to the second state. So I'm going to add a new actuator. It's going to be a state actuator and I'm gonna plug the delay into that, and I want it to set a new state. Basically, that means switch into a new state, so I'm gonna use the set state, which is the default uh, operator. I'm gonna have it set to the second state. That means it's gonna switch into the second state. Okay, let's go ahead and switch into that other state, and we're gonna repeat that process, but after the same amount of time, we're gonna have it switch back to the first state. So, I'm gonna switch over to my second state, here we have it moving in the negative or to the left basically and I'm going to add a new sensor. It's going to be a delay sensor again. I want to wait the same amount of time because I want the cube to go back and forth. So I'll say delay 120 ticks. That means two seconds. I'm going to add another actuator. It's going to be a state actuator and I'll plug the delay into that and I have it switch back to state one. Okay, so I hope you can understand what's happening here. We're switching between two states in the first state. Uh, in that little box, we are moving to the right, and then after a delay of two seconds or 120 ticks, it's going to go to the second state. In that second state, as soon as I switch over to that, click, it does the exact opposite. It's always moving in the opposite direction. And then after 120 seconds, it's going to go back to the first state. Let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to first, though, go back to my first state. I'm going to move the cube over so it's sort of in the middle of the screen and going back and forth. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'll press P on my keyboard and it's moving to the right. Then after two seconds, it's moving to the left and back and forth and back and forth. It works great. The very last thing I have to say in this video is if you want to specify exactly what state you want to have the game start with, that's what this bottom half of this area is for, the initial state that your game should always start with. Right now, depending on what state is visible, I can press P and it'll start in that state. If I want to move left right away, I can just click on that one and it'll always move left at first. If I click on this one, it'll always move right at first. But if I always want to move right at first, no matter what state I'm looking at, I can just click the initial state that I want to start with. That's what the bottom half of this window is for. So press P and it works. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.